Hey everyone and welcome back. For those that have never seen this channel before, I take old vintage pieces of furniture and I either restore them or I restyle them. And my channel is a mix of both where you will see straight up restoration and pieces that are taken and totally transformed. This is one of those. This is a nest of three tables and a small coffee table that has a sliding and folding top. I think it's like a card table. Looks like it's mid-century. The legs and the frame are solid wood. The rest of it is veneered chipboard. And as you can see here, it opens up and it extends out to quite a large table. I'm gonna be doing something totally different with this piece. This is for a customer. She was sick of the brown furniture, but she wanted to keep it, but she wanted it to match her new decor. So stay tuned. I'll be sharing some tips and tricks with you along the way, and hopefully you'll enjoy the process and the final result. As always, thanks very much for taking the time to watch. I tend to clean my pieces before I start any work on them. It's just something that I do. It's not always necessary, especially if you're using paint stripper, but I, I just find it's good practice. So that's all I'm doing here, just using a degreaser spray to give the furniture a good clean. The nest of tables had a protective piece of glass on each of them. And as you can see there, it was stuck down with years of, I don't know, actually, it's probably spilt tea, coffee, whatever. So they needed to come off and be given a thorough cleaning as well. There wasn't a lot of hardware on this piece, just the hinges that obviously fold the top over and there was also the pivot on the bottom and the casters. So all I'm doing here is I'm removing the butterfly nut off the bottom which is where the top pivots and then that will just remove the top. Once I've removed the top I can just then remove the pivot from it and then go on to remove the rest of the hardware. I'm not too sure why, but that part of the felt was covered with some old and dried out masking tape, which left the felt quite fuzzy underneath once I pulled it off. So just get a very sharp Stanley blade and give the felt a shave. As you can see there, the edges of the felt were peeling up a little bit. So easy fix, just a tiny bit of wood glue and just apply that underneath, flatten that out and tap the felt down and leave it to dry. Simple as that. All I needed to do on this piece was to give it a good scuff sand, but I also use this opportunity to try and remove any scratches and dints that might be in the wood just to give a better finish later.
The reason I switched to a scraper at this point is because as I was sanding, it had quite a lot of sticky stuff on the top. It looked like, I, I don't think anything had spilled because it didn't come off from cleaning, but it was sort of clogging up the sandpaper. So all, all I did there was scrape the bulk of it off and then back to the sanding. Apologies if there is a little bit too much sanding shown in this video. I did cut it down significantly, but I also wanted to give a real representation of the work that goes into preparing these pieces. And obviously in this case, I'm doing two lots of furniture. Whilst I'm just removing this dust, I'd like to take the opportunity to say a massive thank you to everybody that supports the channel. And if you like these videos and you like the content that I put on, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button and sharing these videos. It really helps the channel grow and hopefully it'll allow me to carry on for many more years to come. This next step may be a little bit controversial. I'm using a clear acrylic lacquer as a stain blocking primer. But don't worry, I've tried this out. I treated this wood with lacquer, then painted it and allowed it to dry and give it the scratch test. Not a problem whatsoever. This paint hadn't even cured. It had only dried for about half an hour. I was confident that this was gonna do the job. So I went ahead and primed the entire piece. Good girl. Do you want a cork? Come on then. What do you want? What? Oh, we've got a cork. Okay. Go! Uh oh. Stuff in there. Let me get in there. Oh, what's that? What's in it? Straight past it. Let me get one. Let's have a look. Ooh, what have you got? You got? Stop. The brief for this piece from the customer was that she simply wanted it in a mid grey colour. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just mixing up some of the paint that I had in order to get a mid grey. For those that have watched my channel before, you will know that when I paint, I like to spray because I just like the smooth finish. And just to answer everyone's question that I normally get, this is a Wagner Flexio 590 sprayer. This simple sprayer has served me really well up till now and I am hoping to upgrade it to the pro version but they are quite a lot of money so maybe maybe one day when I become a YouTube sensation I'll be able to invest in one of those.
So I guess this next step isn't technically decoupaging, but it is paper and I am sticking it onto the furniture to give the furniture a different look. This is some geometric paper that I got and it is exactly what the customer wanted. In fact, she chose this paper. So all I'm doing here is I'm getting a central point from it and then cutting it down to size. What I was aiming for when I was doing the cuts and the measurements is to get the most suitable part of the pattern centralized so I knew it would look right on the furniture. So that's what I did there and before I add the adhesive I'm just doing a test fit to make sure it's the right size. You can use Mod Podge and all that but this is this has been really good for me. It's like a border adhesive, it's a thicker paste wallpaper paste and you just simply apply it to the furniture like you would apply paper to the wall. Just make sure all the air bubbles are out and the paper is nice and flat. The hinges were solid brass, so I used some water, barkeeper's friend, and a nylon brush. I also used a little bit of 4-0 steel wool, just to get that nice and shiny. The original casters were working and in a reasonable condition, but they just didn't look right on the on the new piece. So I was gonna do something different with them and first thing to do was clean them, then remove that leftover paint with a Scotch-Brite wheel on a Dremel tool. And that did a really good job and it also buffed up the metal finish really nicely, as you can see there. Once the front section of the casters was sorted, then I had to do something with the back and these were plastic and they were brown so they just wouldn't have gone with the piece. So all I'm doing there is using a brass brush just to get a bit of a key on there and masking them off ready for paint. So I went with a silver paint and this has got a built-in primer and is suitable for use on plastic. Although the paint doesn't need any added protection, the decoupage paper areas certainly do. And for that, I'm using an acrylic varnish. I'm using a high density foam roller to apply the polyacrylic varnish. A bit of a side effect to that is sometimes you can get little air bubbles. So a good tip, as you can see, there's the air bubbles. Just use a heat gun and watch those air bubbles disappear. Although the paint doesn't need any additional protection, I'm just adding some finishing wax onto this surface because it's potentially gonna be heavily used. Just simply wipe it on with a brush, leave it to set for a little while, and then buff it off. For the inside of the table, I'm using my favorite Howard's Feed and Wax. Again, just apply that with a brush, let it soak in, and wipe off any excess after about 30 minutes.
just to lift the piece up to a, another level and to pull in the silver geometric stripes from the pattern paper I'm using some silver gilding wax on the edges and that's quite easy to apply just make sure you put a glove on and you can simply apply that with your finger so I'm doing that on the nest of tables and also on the main table and then it's just a case of reassembly so thank you very much for watching and I really hope you like the final results